What up YouTube? What up world? Back at you one more time. This time with the tracing and cutting out and applying of the preserver. Here I'm going about a quarter inch off the edge of the shoe just to make sure that it comes up um, and wraps up the edge of the midsole or outsole a little bit but uh, not too much especially in places where there's cracks and crevices on the side of the shoe you do want it to extend a little further in those areas make like a half circle off the edge of the shoe or in this where it indents I go inward a little indent just a little bit but I'm still about a quarter inch off the entire edge of the shoe um, you're doing this basically like I said so it can wrap up the edges a little if you don't want to for photography so be it um, but in all honesty, the only time you'll slightly notice the preservers is in some nice HD on-foot pics that you so commonly see on Instagram and Twitter. Um, but even then, they're not even that noticeable, if at all noticeable, in majority of your pictures. Here, I'm going up on the toe. That's the only area you don't want it to come over the edge of the sole or the outsole by a quarter of an inch. You actually want it to be right end right before the edge so that it doesn't come off over the outsole onto the leather of the toe box. See there? Basically got about a quarter inch around the whole shoe. This is a shoe I've worn about 20 times. It was my first 11 I did or one of the first so it's not as perfected of a preserver cutout. It doesn't come up the heel all the way on the booty or the toe but Nonetheless, I've worn that shoe about 20 times. Shout out Texas Fresh Kicks. Appreciate the video. Here we have the actual laying the preserver on. Just get it lined up. Um, once you've got it lined up to where it's about a quarter inch all the way around, make sure the toe is uh, lined up just right so you know that the uh, toe is not going to be off crooked a little bit. Peel that up and peel that up and just lay them back down you're just getting the air bubbles out so when you start heating it it doesn't start to form bubbles and uh, basically do like a tortilla on you alright here you want to start heating the toe and the heel first have it at about 4, 425 start heating that heel you can heat the middle a little heat the toe and you just want to go back and forth you're watching all the the preserver just kind of flatten out and smooth out all, you see wrinkles kind of working out of the preserver you see it molding into the shoe a little bit and you just want to do all this get the center a little and then also you want to go back to the heel and the toe a little bit and those are going to be the areas that you start to push down with your thumb first you push down with your thumb opposed to rub your thumb from one side to the other for two reasons one when you're pushing you're causing the preserver to adhere better to the sole you're gonna see it fill into the grooves you're gonna see it mold into the pores of the rubber and actually see the indentation of the rubber also when you rub your finger to the side you cause ripples and wrinkles and sometimes can be irreversible as a buddy of mine just experienced with his what the KDs that he was doing got a little wrinkle it was almost irreversible I had to step in and peel it up and flatten the wrinkle out and get it to where it would adhere without having wrinkles um, that way they didn't like wear wear down quicker where that raised wrinkle was or something here I am pushing all the raised areas of the shoe first so I'm not trying to get down in the grooves um, I'm not trying to like push all that down right now just basically anything that sticks up I'm trying to push the preserver onto it those little dots that I'm pointing at each thumb I'm pushing right there is just a dot in the sole like a raised part of the sole I'm basically pushing I want to get it all connected I got it connected in the front and the back where it's all pushed down now I start in the middle you don't want to do the middle first because that's where you stretch the preserver it stretches down into that hole um, you start in the middle when you're doing the middle of the sole and work your way out to the edges now I'm going over to the edge then I'll work my way over to the other edge again when doing the edges I'm just pressing down on the raised areas 
I'm not getting down in between those grooves right now. Push all the raised edges and then go and get in the grooves. Now I'm pushing the edges down. I'm going to start working on the edges just a little bit. Okay. Just to seal that that middle off. All right. Now then, I believe I've already worked my way through the sole and pushed all the in-between places down. Now I'm going to go get the edges. In other words, after I push my thumb on all those raised areas, all those raised dots, I ran my thumb in between those raised dots, pushing down a little section at a time and pushing it down into the grooves between those raised dots so that it too was adhered to the sole there as well as the raised parts. Um, right now I'm doing the edges. See how I have the heat gun angled? I'm being a little careless because this shoe you don't have to be as careful with but when I angle the heat gun at this upward angle like this and I put it right on the edge this is what I mean like especially on retro 11s um, stuff like with uh, more easier to damage midsoles so to say um, you want to be more careful and keep that heat right on the edge you don't want the heat to be hitting the midsole only the part where there's rubber and then you flatten each little piece by piece work your way around the shoe doing that this is going to be the most time consuming part of the shoe because you are trying to make sure that everything is adhering well there's no like loose wrinkles where dirt can get in or it can start to lose track or grip um, and become flapping and messed up because of the way you applied it um, by the way I didn't mention but you can get these heat guns that I'm using at amazon.com type in variable temperature heat gun the first two that come up are Ryobi and DeWalt, two of the most trustworthy names in uh, power tools. I mean, they're right up there with Black & Decker if you've heard of them. Um, there are other brands. If you want to stay away from the $60 to $70 range, there's a $30 uh, variable temperature heat gun. I can't say it's going to perform as well, but it will get the job done. It will get hot enough. Blow dryers, in fact, do not get hot enough for the most part. You may have a power blow dryer once in a while that gets hot enough or whatever, but even then, with the blow dryer, the hole that the heat comes out of is a lot bigger. It's about two inches opposed to an inch in uh, diameter, in, or I'm sorry, in radius. Um, and with that bigger hole it's harder to control the heat and where you're directing it and angling it now I'm just hitting the toe piece last I've got all the edges tucked down I've got the whole sole done um, as you see all the raised dots in the preserver um, the preservers like in the grooves of the dots but um, yeah go to amazon.com search the wall or I'm sorry search variable temperature heat guns check out DeWalt Ryobi are my first two uh, that I would advise then that third one there I think there's a third one right below those two brands and that's just as good get the heat or the burn cream at any Eckerd's or I'm sorry CVS or Walgreens Tom Thumb Kroger Walmart any pharmacy area here we have heel pieces what the other brands try to sell you, I give you for free. They try to sell you little heel pieces and grip pieces. All that's unnecessary. All that's not needed. I've worn these on every pair of shoes that I own. I, you know, just trust me. Put these extra heel pieces so that you don't get a little hole like I showed you in my Cigar 6s earlier. And that was in the previous video, by the way. But uh, you put the extra heel pieces so you don't get a hole after one or two wears. I've had shoes like those Cigar 6s or my Taxi 12s. After one or two wears, getting a hole in my... Ooh, there I'm popping a little air bubble. There's an air bubble after I put that heel piece on. 
but I know that it's preserved underneath the heel piece, so I just clipped a little hole in it, heat it up, now I'm pushing the air out of it so that it flattens down and doesn't have an air bubble. And uh, that'll save you some time and headache. Um, and if that was the original preserver, not a heel piece, after I cut that hole and rubbed it down, I would have put a little bandage piece, a little like triangle or square piece over that hole and just applied heat to that to make sure that it covered it well. But anyways, these heel pieces are going to save you money in the long run because other brands want you to come back and spend money quicker. They want you to have to come and reinvest an extra 25 to 35 dollars whatever they sell these things for um, you know as soon as possible because that's more money in their pocket but really I would rather you have to come back to get another set to do another pair or come back to get another set a year later because you finally after getting 20 to 40 wears off that one preserver set finally need a new one for that same pair you know I don't want you to have to come back because you didn't apply it right and messed it up and had to throw away half of it or because you didn't put extra layers on to get some extra life out of them this is gonna double triple the life of your preserver so if you know you wear them right and you aren't running around walking as fast as possible just bending your toe boxes up you know um, they can last even longer it really solely depends on how you wear them um, me personally what up triple D gear appreciate the love on that necklace by sinful jewels got the nice inscripted brand names on the back but yeah um, man got distracted but basically you you, you want to get everything like your money's worth from one set and know that you know like it's gonna last you the longest and it's gonna get get the most for your money so if you're walking your fastest and bending your toe boxes you know soul preservers probably won't last that long for you you know they they will last a uh, person who cares less for them less time than they will someone who pays attention to where they step like just because you're you know preserved doesn't mean that a, a hole can't be punched in it from a rock so that when you're walking through a parking lot don't just go walking across the rocks because you got preservers uh, you'll still stab a hole in the preserver and now you're creating a problem you could have avoided so just like not having preservers you want to be mindful of where you walk and what you step on but you're just covered a little more in that instance um, if you step on gum, it'll wipe off with a Lysol wipe or a uh, Clorox, you know, disinfectant wipe. Here, I take and demonstrate how I do the heel pieces. So you put your shoe as far to the edge of one side of the preserver so that there's plenty left over on the other side, and then you just trace a half moon. And this is what people want to sell you for five dollars or more. I don't even know. I'm just saying. But trace your own couple half moons, cut those out, you know, after you do that, you've got a little extra. I'm going to go ahead and take that extra and keep applying it so that I have more coverage, you know, more, more preservation product on the sole. So I'm going to get these heels cut out real quick and then show you how I would, you know, line up the, the rest of it and figure out how I'm going to apply it. Get that second heel cut off. And now I'm just going to take a, a triangle part, you know, and line it up on the toe box and cut that to where it's lined up with the edge. Cut the toe off where it's lined up and then cut this little piece off. Now you got some more left over. Alright. Well, I know I stopped about where my thumb is right there. So I'm going to go and take and put some right above where my thumb was and just trim the unneeded parts, trim the corner so it's, you know, shaped with the shoe. There's my next piece. Now with the final piece, let me figure out how I'm going to work it on here. Huh? That does a triangle. Oh, there we go. 
covers a whole another two inches of the side on the inside of your shoe where in my opinion you put the most weight except for your heel like the most weight goes on your heel and that inside part where my thumb is right there so you want to have those preserved more so bam these cut little triangles out cut the little like s stuff off save those triangles those are new band-aids that's what I was saying if you get an air bubble pop that air bubble slap a band-aid like that over it and you know you're preserved still alright now then to applying the heel pieces it's really rather simple all you're gonna do is you are going to take those heel pieces and slap them on and what I do is I leave the paper backing on them line them up then peel a little bit of the end closer to the heel up and fold that paper backing underneath and then semi apply that piece that I peeled back and basically just peel the paper out from under it and make sure that I lay the heel piece onto the heel flat but YouTube enough talking hope this covered everything hope it answered a lot of questions I hope it helped y'all see and understand how and why to use these and what what their purpose is but honestly shoes that I would wear once a month or once every six months I now wear two days in a row or twice a month you know like way more frequent so just stop stocking and start rocking